the natural universe. Sport is a purely man-made concoction. It, there's nothing more natural, nothing, there's no more natural than Monopoly or Parcheesi. I mean, somebody said, they've changed Monopoly and it's no longer Monopoly. It's not real Monopoly anymore. You know, they've, they've added uh, some street in place of uh, Ventnor Gardens or Marvin Gardens. Uh, and it's just not Monopoly anymore. Well, maybe it's not Monopoly, but to say it violates the real Monopoly or the essence of Monopoly is to misunderstand that Monopoly is a truly man-made idea. So is football. We change it every year. We change the rules. We change the boundaries. We put the, the uprights in different places. We make them wider. We make them narrower. In Canada, you have three downs. Here, you have four. I mean, some places you can pass on a kickoff. Some places you can't. Um, you can make it any way you want. It doesn't have any innate definition or essence. Tackling, passing, punting are not inherent to football. We could ban tackling. It would still be football. We could ban the punt, which is a very dangerous activity. We could ban kickoffs. We could have a, a jump ball after each kickoff, the way they do in basketball. Gatorade, carbo-loading steroids, they're not inherent to track events. They're inconsistent with them. People who do these things, they do them. <laughs> it's not. We don't say it's not a race if somebody carbo-loads, um, that a race is only a race uh, a mile run or a marathon if somebody does it without carbo loading or taking Gatorade or taking sips of water at the break. So in summary, these four claims about steroids, that they're unfair, that they're harmful, that they're unnatural, uh, and that they're coercive, um, don't seem to me consistent or coherent justifications. Um, for banning them. That is, there doesn't seem to be any moral issue behind any of these arguments that I can discern. Now, let me just, in the last few minutes, try to tie this with some issues of more direct concern to pediatricians um, and by briefly um, making some observations about two issues with which you are all familiar. First, uh, the use of growth hormone, the expanding use of growth hormone for non-growth hormone deficient children. Um, when recombinant growth hormone became available. Um, a genie was released from a bottle. Um, that is, it was now possible to ask the question about whether unlimited amounts of growth hormone to normal children um, could make them grow. Uh, we could never ask that question before because the amount of growth hormone was in such short supply that it did seem immoral to give even a milligram of it to anybody other than somebody who was profoundly growth hormone deficient, who was going to be profoundly dwarfed, and who could be corrected to uh, get into the normal range for height. But once we could make truckload quantities of it, we could first do the research um, to ask the question um, whether or not so-called normal short children could be made taller. My colleague Dave Allen and I put on a symposium 10 years ago in Madison um, uh, in which we invited all the leading pediatric endocrinologists and many prominent bioethicists to uh, debate and discuss this issue. That is, anticipating that these clinical trials might succeed and they might show that you could make normal children 